Hello, registered early childhood educators. Welcome to the college's webinar focused on the revised continuous professional learning program. My name is Melanie Dixon. I am an RECE and the Director of Professional Practice at the College of Early Childhood Educators. We appreciate you joining us tonight as we discuss for the first time the new revised CPL program designed specifically for RECEs. If you would like closed caption, please click live transcript at the bottom of the screen. Before going any further, I would like to acknowledge that today, spread out across the province we now call Ontario, we acknowledge that the land we are all meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations. We begin by inviting you to reflect on the unique connections and relationships Indigenous persons and their ancestors have had with these places for thousands of years and countless generations. Tradi traditional Indigenous knowledge has always centered on maintaining positive relationships between the human and non-human world. Canada's mistreatment of the original inhabitants of this land has caused immeasurable harm, not only in the past, but continuing today and affecting future generations. May we individually and collectively take action to support reconciliation, healing and change. To serve and protect the public interest, we at the college must use our voices and privilege to insist upon equitable and inclusive experiences for all children that are touched by RECEs and to amplify the voices of those with lived experiences of being marginalized. We owe those responsibilities to the indigenous caretakers of this land who continue to suffer the effects of colonialism. So the focus for tonight's webinar is to provide information about the revised CPL program, which has been refreshed to simplify the portfolio experience for members and enhance to include a new educational requirement focused on prevention of sexual abuse. I ask that you please hold your questions until the Q&A section of our webinar. The college was established back in 2007 when the provincial government passed the Early Childhood Educators Act. That recognized that we are a unique and distinct profession. We have unique sets of skills, knowledge, values, and there's a science behind our practice. The college's mandate is to regulate the profession of early childhood education in the public interest. And how do we serve and protect the public interest? Like the other, 40 or so regulated professions across the province of Ontario, we have regis registration requirements. So who can become a member of the college? We have certain set of educational requirements and other criteria that individuals must meet. Once we become a member, our name appears on the public register. And that's the way that employers, families, colleagues, and other interested parties can go and confirm that we are indeed a mem member of the college and what is our status. Like other regulated professions, we also have ethical and professional standards, and those are outlined in our Code of Ethics and Standards of Practice. Now the public also expects, and we expect of each other, that we're going to continue to grow and enhance our knowledge and our skills and our competence as regulated professionals, hence, the CPL program. And like other regulated professionals, there are times when we have to remind members about those ethical and professional responsibilities 
And uh, that's why we have a complaints and discipline process. So in our practice guideline on professionalism, we define what it is, uh, what professionalism is. And here on this slide, we have some of the, the key aspects that we've highlighted in that practice guideline. In our circle on the right-hand side, we can see uh, certain aspects of professionalism that you're going to find in all regulated professions. One, there is an expectation that we're holding up ethical values. Those are outlined in our code of ethics. We're going to apply our knowledge and skills as outlined in the standards of practice. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to continue engaging in our ongoing professional learning because that those elements, so our, our values and our knowledge and skills uh, will, uh, along with reflective practice and um, uh, reflective practice and our knowledge and skills are all going to help inform our using our professional judgment and exercising good professional judgment. And we also have a responsibility to be accountable, accountable to our actions, our decisions, our behaviors um, in, in terms of our practice. In our profession, we have a protected title. And that is one way that we can communicate to the public, our employers, families, colleagues, other professionals and uh, community partners that we work with, that we are a regulated profession, that, that you are a professional. So we're required to use that title of registered early childhood educator and our designation, but that's also something that we should be proud of. And it demonstrates that the public can have trust in us. We have a certain set of skills, knowledge and experience that's unique to uh, this profession and the practice of early childhood education. The decisions you make as an early childhood educator are not uh, simple. They can oftentimes be very complex. And that's another piece that sets us apart uh, from other uh, professions as well. We also believe in the idea of collective responsibility. The fact that yes, we are individually accountable for our behaviors and our practices. However, we also look to uphold each other, to communicate and collaborate together and up to, to support each other in upholding our professional and ethical responsibilities. And as, and as outlined in standard four on professionalism and leadership, we acknowledge that all our ECEs, regardless of position or title, are leaders. So continuing to grow in our, in our leadership is another aspect of being a professional. Your ongoing learning and leadership contributes to improving quality in early childhood education for children, families, and communities. It supports collaboration and adapting to changes in the early learning and childcare sector. And that's definitely an area that we've had to pay close attention to over the past two years, and even prior to that. Um, your ongoing learning and leadership informs and supports your application of emerging research and rethinking of theories and practices. Again, another aspect and, uh, that we had to um, go really reflect on, how were we going to practice in the context of uh, living through a pandemic? If it weren't for your ongoing learning, you know, where would we be? Your ongoing learning and leadership builds on your knowledge and skills to create inclusive and equitable environments, policies, and systems. And it supports the advancement of the profession in workplaces and communities, and so much more. There are a variety of factors that influence Council's decision to revise the program. First, we needed to revise the CPL program to incorporate the government mandated sexual abuse prevention program, which you're going to hear more about shortly. We also heard feedback from members and stakeholders through a variety of data sources 
and understood the need to reduce the program's complexity. We recognize also the reality of the impact of the pandemic, pandemic on the sector and needed to consider how could we reduce stress by simplifying the program. So here's a very high level overview of core aspects of the program. We now have identified educational components. So prior to in our current version of the CPL program, we talk about step one and step two. Step one being all new members um, uh, completing the expectations for practice module. And step two was the CPL portfolio cycle, the two year CPL portfolio cycle. Now we've identified educational components. So for all, um, we have the expectations for practice module and the sexual abuse prevention program. And then we have the one year CPL portfolio cycle. So for expectations for practice, the vast majority of you participating this evening will have already completed um, expectations for practice. Uh, for those of you who may be newer members and have registered within the last year, uh, you may have completed it or, or, or will complete it before your next renewal. But going forward, any new member joining the college will be expected to do both the expectations for practice module and the sexual abuse prevention program. So for existing members, who've already completed the expectations for practice module, the sexual abuse prevention program will be the next um, key um, component or aspect of the CPL program that will be uh, required. So this is um, a warning that we give um, when we're doing presentations, the fact that Sexual abuse is a sensitive subject matter. It is something that unfortunately, um, many people have been impacted by. And so we just want to recognize that the content may be difficult for some of you. I want to uh, acknowledge that this evening, we're not getting a, a, a deep into content. I'm just going to be providing an overview of the program and uh, some of the principles behind the program and what it, what it includes, what, a little bit about what you can expect. We'd also really like you to, to be aware and know that we are creating resources to support your learning through this. Uh, one of our resources is about caring for self and others. So giving you some strategies and tips to support you as you engage with the program. We are also working with a third party, uh, which we'll uh, be announcing uh, soon, um, to develop workshops for members. And um, the content of um, those workshops will be focused on trauma-informed care, uh, which will be tailored specifically for you as RECEs in the context of completing uh, the Sexual Abuse Prevention Program. So sexual abuse prevention programs are required of all regulated health professions. So this is uh, nothing new in the context of other regulated professionals. Um, it imposes, the, so it, it recognizes the fact that as professionals, as individuals who are working closely with children and families, that you are in a unique position of trust. and. Um, uh, as of December uh, 2020, the requirement of the college to have a continuous professional learning program was embedded in by the government in the Early Childhood Educators Act. And having a sexual abuse prevention program imposes the obligation on a, the professional regulator to think more broadly than simply, simply responding to complaints of harm done by professionals but really look at how can we prevent this to ha in happening in the first place. So really this requirement is groundbreaking 
and positions Ontario as a leader in child protection, as it is the first time such a requirement has been applied to non-health professionals. So not only us, but this requirement for having a sexual abuse prevention program was also added uh, to the legislation for teachers. No such requirement exists outside of Ontario. The college welcomes these changes as the development of the sexual abuse prevention program provides an opportunity to recognize the position of trust that RECs occupy to think broadly and proactively about pro public protection and develop a program that is specific to this profession. While the legislation sets out the requirements of a sexual abuse prevention program, the approach to implementing the program is determined by each respective organization or professional regulator. So we do have to have educational requirements for members. But we also recognize that what will develop will complement the existing content learned in ECE post-secondary programs and also complement existing college resources, such as expectations for practice and the professional advisory on duty to report. We are also required to have guidelines for the conduct of members with children. And these guidelines currently exist in the Code of Ethics and Standards of Practice and the Professional Misconduct Regulation. In the legislation, we're also required to have training for the college's staff uh, involved in professional regulation and for committee members on complaints and discipline committees. And we're also required to provide information to the public, such as information for employers on duty to report and mandatory employer reports. So the college already has a comprehensive program with the required elements for dealing with sexual abuse. Our efforts are now going to be focused on the prevention of sexual abuse. To begin addressing the sexual abuse prevention program objectives, the primary focus will be the implementation of the educational requirement for members. Enhancing the ability of Ontario's more than 58,000 RECEs to, pre to prevent sexual abuse of children will have an immediate and significant impact on the safety and healthy development of hundreds of thousands of children. So tonight, I'm going to highlight some aspects of the member education program. We identified six guiding principles that uh, would inform the development of this program. First of all, that it's child-centered, that decisions are informed by the best interests of children to enhance children's holistic development and protect their right to be free from sexual abuse. It's focused on prevention, to protect the public by enabling the prevention of child abuse before it occurs through proactive approaches rather than reactive approaches. It's meant to be empowering, recognizing that RECs are trustworthy, knowledgeable leaders who build relationships which put them in a unique position to help prevent child sexual abuse. That it's evidence informed to promote the use of appropriate and effective strategies, taking into consideration the uniqueness of the profession and the age group served. That it's inclusive and anti oppressive demonstrate respect for the diversity of the profession and the children and families of Ontario, and that it's guided by an awareness of and commitment to disrupt systemic oppression and racism, and that it's accessible, that it removes barriers to participation and accessing resources. To inform the program development, the college received advice from, the sub from subject matter experts specializing in healthy child development and well being and healthy sexual development in early childhood to conduct a review of the research related to prevention programs. The college also conducted a scan of other reg Ontario regulatory bodies and reviewed all allegations of sexual abuse received by the college since its inception. 
So we've set a number of objectives for the member education program. To increase knowledge of child sexual abuse and the ability to identify behaviors of concern, such as grooming behaviors and boundary transgressions. We're also looking to increase procedural knowledge of reporting requirements under child youth and family under the Child Youth and Family Services Act. To increase knowledge of abuse response skills, body science, consent, and healthy relationships as part of holistic child development. To increase procedural knowledge to build transparent, accountable, and proactive organizational cultures that prevent sexual abuse and increase the ability to create policies for prevention of sexual abuse in early learning and care settings. So the program is, uh, the online education is available for free on demand and in English and in French. And we've developed a program in partnership with the Canadian Center for Child Protection, which is a national charity dedicated to the personal safety of all children. This organization's goal is to reduce the sec uh, sexual abuse and exploitation of children, assist in the location of missing children, and prevent child victimization through programs, services, and resources for Canadian families, educators, child-serving organizations, law enforcement, and other parties. You will access um, the uh, sexual abuse prevention program through my college account. And it, uh, there are three required elements, uh, a program called Commit to Kids, Teach Retells. Both of those are part of the um, uh, Canadian Center for Child Protection um, uh, rep, uh, resources that we will be, you will be accessing. And the college has developed uh, three uh, resources uh, for you to review one of which uh, you would already be familiar with, and that is the professional advisory on duty to report. And then uh, another one around racism and bias in reporting to child welfare, and um, a couple of scenarios that have developed been developed uh, as well, particular to the profession. So the program will be available um, uh, starting in July, and as I mentioned earlier, you will access it via my college account available on the college website. We will be sharing information in the months to come around uh, caring for self and others, um, and as well uh, information about uh, participating in the live uh, trauma-informed care workshops. And other information will be coming to you in your uh, email. So I've talked about the educational components uh, of which, and now we have the, the two expectations for practice module and the sexual abuse prevention program. And um, next we'll talk about the CPL portfolio cycle. So it is simplified, one year, one goal. So prior to, it was a two-year cycle. We've reduced that down to a one-year cycle. We used to have three goals, and now it will be one goal per year. We currently also have three components, and we will be moving to two components. So the purpose of the CPL portfolio is to enhance understanding and application of the code of ethics and standards of practice so that we can improve and strengthen our professional practice. It's also intended to facilitate reflect self-reflection and promote intentional self-directed goal development and learning activities based on our interests and priorities. The program also encourages professional communication, collaboration, communities of practice and networking as part of the ongoing learning and also supports professionalism and leadership development. So the program continues to be grounded in self-reflection and self-directed learning. So one of the biggest questions, when do I begin? So we have developed a timeline chart which was uh, emailed 
to all, all members when we announced the chain, the revised CBL program back on April 21st. And you can also find this chart online. So here I'm gonna uh, provide an example. So let's say we have a member who renews in September. So you find your, your renewal month on the chart. It includes uh, the 12 months starting from July, 2022 to June, 2023. And uh, so you locate September. By the time um, it's your renewal time in September, you will have to complete the current uh, requirement that you're on. If you're a new member, perhaps it's expectations for practice. If you've been a member for a while, it could be year one of your two-year portfolio cycle, or it could be the second year of your two-year portfolio cycle. You will confirm when you go to renew for September that you have completed that requirement. And then you'll begin to uh, complete the sexual abuse prevention program. And you have until September of 2023 when you'll renew to confirm compliance um, with having completed the sexual abuse prevention program. After that, from September 2023 to September 2024, you're going to begin and do your first one-year CPL portfolio cycle. So let's look at another example. So here we're looking at a member who renews in May. So you have renewed already, you will complete the requirement um, um, that you're about to engage on. It could be year one of the two-year portfolio cycle, or it could be um, the second year of the two-year portfolio cycle. If you're starting a new portfolio cycle, two-year portfolio cycle, you're going to focus your three goals on a one-year time frame because come May of 2023 is when you're going to confirm that you've done a, a one year of the current uh, CPL program. And then in May, you have from May 2023 to May 2024 to complete the sexual abuse pre prevention program. And uh, after that point, from May 2024 to 2025, that's when you'll complete your first one year portfolio cycle. So here, here's the program at a glance again, our educational components, expectations for practice, the sexual abuse prevention program for all members in their first year of practice, or in the case of those of us who are already members of the college, that will be the focus after our next renewal after uh, July 2022. And then uh, the year after that, we will begin this one year CPL portfolio cycle. The portfolio cycle is optional during the year that you are completing your uh, sexual abuse prevention program. So we've reached the end of our presentation. Uh, so for the next few minutes, um, we're happy to take uh, your questions about the revised CPL um, program and the sexual abuse prevention program. So to ask questions, uh, simply click on and type in the Q&A box at the bottom center of your Zoom screen. And I have, uh, besides the tech folks in the background, um, or our communication folks, uh, rather staff in the background supporting uh, the webinar, uh, we also have uh, Meredith Farley online, a uh, registered early childhood educator and who works uh, with me in the professional practice department. And uh, Deborah Gores, who is in the background checking the box um, as well for the Q and A's. So she may be entering some links there in for you. Uh, Deb is also a registered early childhood educator and uh, works in the professional practice department. They are both professional practice analysts. So welcome, mm -hmm. <laughs> Meredith. Um, in the meantime, while you're entering your questions, I'm just going to, uh, we've got a couple questions, frequently asked questions um, that uh, I'm going to address right now. So can I begin the sexual abuse prevention program in July when it becomes available? So even if July is not your renewal month, 
you will have access to the program and you can begin to um, in, engage in uh, the, the program and complete aspects of it. Just be clear as to when you actually are required to complete it so that you know which year you're going to be confirming compliance uh, with the program when you go to renew. But it is as soon as it's available, you have access to it and can begin completing it. So my renewal month is before July 2022. Do I still have to do the two-year portfolio cycle? So yes, you will complete the portfolio cycle, the current portfolio cycle, um, whatever year you're in, basically, you're looking to plan for your learning for the upcoming year, uh, based on the current um, model on the current uh, portfolio cycle. And my renewal month is after July 2022, do I still have to do the two year portfolio cycle. So if you um, once you renew after July of 2022, that's when you're going to begin the sexual abuse prevention program. Uh, so again, whatever you're doing right now um, is required under the current CPL program. You need to complete that before you renew um, uh, upon your next renewal after July of 2022. And after that point will be your time to start the CPL um, sorry, the Sexual Abuse Prevention Program. We do refer to the timeline chart. Uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Another area that you can check for information about your CPL and where you ought to be is through my college account. We have uh, the Continuous Professional Learning uh, tab there. And that's uh, where you're also, as of July, going to be able to access the um, Sexual Abuse Prevention Program. And you can see at what stage you should be um, in the um, in the cycle. So, how are we doing, Meredith? We're doing good. Hi, everybody. So there is um, seventy-one questions in the chat right now. I'm going <laughs> to um, I'm going to focus on uh, questions related to the sexual abuse prevention program, Melanie. Mm -hmm. um, so this, I'm going to combine this question. So is the sexual abuse prevention program the same program as the one um, provided by Ontario College of Teachers? And if I've already completed that program as a part of my OCT renewal, um, do I need to do it again for my um, RECE renewal? Yes. Or can I say? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so... Uh, there are similarities, but our programs are different to respect, re reflect the unique, uh, our unique uh, profession. So both programs uh, include commit to kids. But as uh, we saw earlier in the presentation, uh, our ECEs are also required to do T-Tree Tells, uh, which is a, it's actually a uh, less than 20 minute video to watch. So, um, and uh, some other resources that are optional to, to peruse or, and use. And um, then reviewing the college uh, created resources. So if you have completed um, the commit to kids as a dual credential, the RECE uh, OCT, uh, you will need to complete the knowledge validation test, uh, which you'll uh, know what that is if you have completed your um, the sexual abuse prevention program through OCT. Uh, you'll complete that uh, on the portal that's unique to you through the college of ECE. Thanks, Melanie. Okay, and so I'm thinking that because there's a lot of questions about um, when to start specific start times and um, um, whether or not um, people who are doing um, the three goal format should start immediately on the one goal format. Um, and so in conjunction with those questions, there's questions about where to find um, the chart that was presented on the slides too. Um, okay. So let's start 
uh, with the chart and where to find that. So if you go to the college's website and um, uh, I'm going to, if we can advance the slide, um, I think the next slide includes the college website. So if you go to the college website and under the member tab, you're going to find a page that's dedicated to the revised CPL program. So you click on there for information about the revised program and on that page also links to the current program uh, requirements and, and pages um, uh, for our current program. You can also find on the website under the member tab the, the, a page dedicated to the sexual abuse prevention program. So I renew in January. So let me give you another example. I renew in January. I was starting, um, or I am I have started a two-year, um, I was to start a new two-year portfolio cycle. I've planned for one year. So January to January, three goals for one year. Because when I go to renew in January, I'm not going to complete the second year of my two-year portfolio cycle. That will end. And I'm going to begin the sexual abuse prevention program. So if, you're, if you renew before July, wherever you are in the cycle, you need, in, you need to complete the current cycle. As of July 2022, find your next renewal date. It's at that point that you'll start the sexual abuse uh, prevention program. So you are required to continue whatever it is you might be working on. If you started back in November, year one or year two, you're continuing that until November. And at that point, you're going to start the CPL, um, the revised program, which you will start with the sexual abuse prevention program. So the easiest way to figure out when you should be starting is the sexual, the new program. Have a look at that chart. Visit the website. Um, that chart is available on the revised CPL program page. So I'll stop there, Meredith. If, <laughs> other questions? Um, great, Melanie. Um, the link to that um, particular website page would be useful to a lot of people in the chat. Um, another question about the sexual abuse prevention program is that, is it required to be done once or do we do it every few years? So at this point, you will um, be required to complete uh, this educational component as it's designed, but know that we will continue to consider what are the needs of members um, in terms of learning and, you know, what the, what emerges over time. So there may be some other requirements in the future, but for the time being, it is the um, uh, sexual abuse prevention program as we've designed it to date. Beautiful. Um, I'm wondering too, if in the chat for the larger group, we could put um, a link to our contact us page because there's a number of questions that are specific to registration requirements as well. Um, so that might be useful so that um, members can, can channel their questions. Um, so, oh, sorry, Deb here. I am not able to send uh, a message in the chat because we're only using the Q&A box. So I'm only able to respond uh, to individuals. Alrighty, so what I would um, suggest for your question specific to registration, um, to email registration at college-ece.ca, if it's information that might be available on my college account, perhaps that's where you can begin, you can start to, to take a peek. And um, if your question isn't answered by taking a look there or on the college uh, website, please uh, do let us know via, um, at, by emailing uh, registration department. I believe in our latest connections, um, 
uh, there was a, a piece in there around uh, renewals. So they were providing some renewal tips. Um, you might want to check that more recent communication uh, through connections. There's a few questions as well, Melanie, about where to find all of this information on our website. Okay, so on this screen, you should be able to see that we've got a screenshot of the top, um, top portion of our website. And um, uh, there's a member tab, so across the top. Um, I'm just going to highlight at the top, of the top right of that screenshot, you'll see my college account. That's where you go to renew. That's where you can go to see your CPL tab. Uh, that's where you'll go in July or, or when it's time for you to begin the, uh, the sexual abuse prevention program. My college account is where you're going to go and um, access the program from there. But you'll note across the top, we have about us, the public, employers, members, and applicants. The member tab as members, number one. You should be checking that out. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can um, find information on renewal, the code and standards, our series called Standards and Practice. And that's where you're going to find the revised CPL program page and have a look on that page, look for the timeline chart, click that link, and it's going to pull up the chart for you. Great. So Melanie, also a question about what are some ideas of what I can expect um, when doing the course for the sexual abuse prevention program? So we will be providing more information about what Commit to Kids is, the Tea Tree Tells, and the, the, um, the uh, resources to review for the college. But basically, Commit to Kids is a series of modules. There are eight modules to complete, followed by a um, knowledge validation test. And uh, you have to, it's like multiple choice, and uh, you have to get 80%. Um, to come to to be considered complete you can take that test as many times as you want I think it's about 20 questions but basically the modules um, it will take about I think we're estimating around two and a half hours two and a half to three hours to complete the commit to kids as I mentioned earlier the teacher tells us about uh, it includes a video that's about 17 minutes long and there's a, a participation um, um, some some I think about four questions to respond to complete that mm -hmm. and then um, complete uh, uh, reviewing reading reviewing the reflecting on the three resources that the college has created so that's it kind of in a nutshell great so uh, are we going to be mailing any packages out for these new programs so for um, commit to kids, we're not. There's nothing mailed out. It will be uh, entirely online. So at the top of the home page of the college's website, you see my college account up there, and uh, that's how you're going to uh, uh, log into my college account. Go to the CPL tab and uh, find the uh, access this um, sexual abuse prevention program through there. Um, in terms of the CPL portfolio, all the resources, uh, the, the new components, the handbook, some examples, um, and other resources are going to be available as of July. So you can begin a one-year portfolio cycle if you want to. Um, however, it is optional during the year that you're completing the sexual abuse prevention program. And you have a whole year to complete the sexual abuse prevention program. And um, uh, for some, you may, some, some members may opt to start as soon as it's available, but technically you have uh, one year um, at minimum to complete it. Great. And how long roughly will it take to complete the sexual abuse prevention program? Is it completed online? And do I get a certificate? So you will, it is completed online. So the Commit to Kids is completed online. Um, after you've completed the knowledge validation test, you will get a, a certificate. Um, and um, 
the commit, uh, sorry, T3 tells is also committed, uh, uh, completed online and you will get a certificate. You will have access to the three uh, resources that the college um, has developed. Uh, when you have completed those and um, acknowledge that you completed the, uh, will receive information about the, will receive confirmation that you've completed Commit to Kids and Teach Retails, and you'll be confirming that you've uh, reviewed the three required resources um, upon renewal. When you check that box that, yes, I have completed my CPL program requirements, uh, when it's your year to have completed uh, the SAP requirements, you'll confirm that you have indeed uh, completed those requirements, and then you'll start your CPL portfolio. Um, I have a quick update. We opened the chat, so we were now able to put in the links into the chat. So if you're looking for some of the links to the timeline chart or CPL web pages, uh, if you open the chat, you'll find the links in there. So I saw um, in terms of the, the I'm seeing a, a couple of questions. Now that I'm, I'm seeing some of the questions uh, pop up there. I don't know if there's anything standing out, uh, Meredith. Um, I was going to um, mention that there was a couple of questions about auditing and whether or not members need to keep their old portfolio um, or if we're starting from, from the beginning and they can, um, not they don't have to keep the so program. so in the current in the current um, uh, the new revised program you have to complete your portfolio uh, sorry you have to keep your portfolios for up to two years so I would recommend that you're keeping current records for at minimum uh, two years. Great, I think it'll be useful for. Um, the links, that's great, the chat's open so that links to the specific um, resources that we have will be accessible. Yes, lots of questions. If you do have yeah. questions, if you could pose them in the Q&A box, because <laughs> there's coming in through the chat box too, but we will get to them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please, uh, yeah, please use the Q&A um, box for the questions. Uh, we'll keep the chat open really more for us to be able to put um, links in for you. So please use the Q&A box for your questions. And there's more than one uh, question related to um, having to start their second year cycle in June, just before the program's launched. So. Yeah. Can I begin the new program in July, or do I have to continue on with my three goals um, that I'll that I'll be starting the second year in June? So there's a few questions about that. Yes. So June people who renew in June will continue with their current uh, CPL portfolio cycle. If you're slated to start a new two-year portfolio cycle, all you're doing is what you're going to do is you're going to plan for one year. Uh, create your three goals, keep them simple, um, and um, they can be related. So, um, and you will uh, focus on those, those goals for the next year. And then it will be in June of 2023 that you will uh, begin the sexual abuse prevention program. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't prevent you from beginning the sexual abuse prevention program. So uh, perhaps that's one of your goals. Mm -hmm. But you will be confirming compliance that you've completed the sexual abuse prevention program in June of 2024. That's really... So um, a few more questions about the content of the sexual abuse prevention program. Um, as such, will there be programs, workshops, videos? Um, is there a checklist um, to ensure that they're um, meeting all of their requirements? Yes, so the, in the sexual abuse, for the sexual abuse prevention program, 
on the um, portal, or the, the area where they're going to go and complete the program, we will have instructions for completing the program. And, um, and when it's, uh, we will be offering uh, regular webinars for people who are about to begin um, the sexual abuse prevention program um, uh, starting in, in July. So based on renewal months, as I mentioned earlier, we will also be offering webinars around trauma-informed care. And uh, it will be next year, so starting July of 2023, that we will be reaching out to members to find out if they would like a um, printed copy of the updated CPL portfolio handbook and components, or um, if they'll just use the, uh, we incur highly encourage uh, using the web-based um, electronic versions, but we will provide uh, the option for members to request a paper copy for that first year of the new portfolio cycle. All of the, the, um, the resources related to the new one-year portfolio cycle are going to be available for you starting this July. Um, if you wish to access them, if you're curious, if you want to continue with that cycle process uh, during the year that you're doing the sexual abuse prevention program, that's optional. That will be an option for you. And, and for those who are asking specific questions about their um, renewal months and start months, um, Deb has put a link um, to the timeline chart into the chat box. So that's um, where you should look to, to get that information. Um, there's some questions about if there's a cost to the program and what constitutes a CPL portfolio. Um, so the cost to the program, the sexual abuse prevention program, there is no cost. It is um, uh, no cost to the members. Um, so it will be available to you for free. It's uh, in available both in English and in French. And um, I forgot the second part or what you asked. Oh, um, what the CPL portfolio is. Oh, so the CPL <laughs> portfolio. Uh, is made up with a new version that will be available in uh, as of July. Um, includes uh, two components, so a reflection and planning tool. So we've merged the uh, self-assessment tool and the planning tool into one, and uh, a record of professional learning like we currently have. So uh, it's set up a little bit differently, but still really focused on reflecting on your own uh, learning interests and passions and needs and areas for growth. And, um, and yes, we're, we're excited about releasing that. And it's basically planning your learning, determining a, a priority area of learning or a one learning goal for the year and planning your activities based on that, Re uh, recording your reflections and um, your how you might apply that into practice and yeah, then you start again. Um, so there's also some questions related to what red flags might be um, when thinking about child sexual abuse. Um, in addition to the program launch date. Okay, so the program will launch in July um, in terms of being available to all members through my college account. And I'm not going to go into the details of the content and the red flags because um, that will be an area for, um, that will be information that would be presented to us in the sexual abuse prevention program. Alrighty, so maybe the last couple questions and then uh, we'll wrap up. There's a lot of great questions. Some of them are repetitive, so I was just looking through to see if there were ones that you hadn't addressed yet. Some questions about if the forms are gonna be changing for the new um, portfolio and when we can see them. 
Yep. So those will be, uh, they will be different um, and uh, they will be available in July as well. Can we start the sexual abuse program at any time? Uh, yes, July? as soon as, yep. And so as soon as it's available, you will have access to it and can complete it. People are asking about the CPL portfolio handbook. You will be invited to make a request for those next year because it is not required uh, to begin it um, um, until July of 2023 uh, for those who will be re with July renewals. And around that time, we will be communicating uh, with members based on your renewal month and in um, uh, ask you at that time if you wish to receive a paper copy. So the resources, the the portfolio handbook and components in will be available electronically um, uh, on our web website as of July 2022, this year, this coming July. Uh, and it's not until July of 2023 that you're required um, to begin that portfolio based again on your renewal month. Can the sexual abuse component be a goal in and of itself? Could be a goal, for example, those who um, are having are currently completing or about to start a, a new portfolio cycle based on the current program, that could be one of your goals is to complete um, to complete the program. Or you could have some goals related to completing the sexual abuse prevention program. Just know that you're going to be confirming compliance around completing the current portfolio and it won't be until the next year that you're actually confirming compliance with um, completing the sexual abuse prevention program. So for those who are um, asking where the timeline, uh, timeline chart is located, um, Deb has um, put the link to the, the chart in the chat box, which will take you directly to our website. So Meredith, I think um, I think we're gonna, it is about three minutes to eight. We said okay. we would uh, run from seven to eight. So no guessing is needed. Really go to the college's website. That website address is down below on this um, uh, screen. And uh, if you do have questions, you can email us at cpl at college-ece.ca. So please do visit the revised CPL program page that's available under the member section on the website uh, to find answers, find answers to your questions, including when do I begin by checking out the revised timeline chart. So I'd like to uh, thank everyone uh, for uh, being here this evening. Thank you to the communications team and to Meredith and Deb for uh, support with responding to questions. And um, we'd like to invite you to become an active member of the REC community year round. Follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn and visit College Talk, um, our blog regularly for the latest articles that support your practice. And to stay current uh, on college news, be sure to watch your inbox for your connections newsletter. And um, of one of which you should have received a, their, our last issue uh, last Thursday, May 5th. Um, so again, thank you for joining us tonight.